and welcome to day five of our Allegro sew along. So, um, normal, give it a few minutes for everybody to join us, and then we will be finishing our Allegros. I do not need this today. So, While we're waiting on friends to join, I, okay, fingers crossed first that comments work for me tonight, but I just wanted to say how much fun I have had sewing with everybody. It's one of my favorite perks of this job is um, sewing along with you and sharing the little tricks and tips that I've learned over the years of sewing and um, helping you create stuff that you love to wear. And so I have loved it and I am so thankful that you've joined me. Oh, I see a comment. Hey, hi Sue. Hi. Okay. Yay. All right. Fingers crossed for comments. I had fun yesterday, but it's, um, it's sad to not be able to engage directly with you because that's one of my favorite parts is, um, you being able to ask questions as I'm going along. And I couldn't do that yesterday. I think, I think I got, um, Hi! Oh yay! Comments are working. I think I got all of the questions answered yesterday. Um, Tammy was a great help and was following along and answering comments or answering questions that came up. So yay! All right. So today we're going to be pretty much going over all of the finishes for the hems of these. So. Um, Hi Janet. Oh, I'm so excited. I have comments today. Yay. The comments were not working yesterday. So, all right. We've already gone over that. There's a lot of different views for the Allegro. Oh, oh Chris. Hi Kelly. wanted to tell you my bodkin let go mid elastic and I was really channeling your call as I hooked it up. Oh good. I can't expand your comment, but I got most of it. Oh, I hope it worked out for you, Chris. I, oh, I'm terrible with those and I was telling my husband about it um, afterwards and he is he has a trick and I, I don't know how he does it uh, he uses an old wire hanger to fish everything through something that goes on in this house I don't know if it happens for you guys you know hoodies have the drawstrings he goes through and he yanks them out of everybody's hoodies so like you could be walking by and he will grab one and try to try to pull them out and so he is king of fishing those back there I won't do it I won't do it it's just like you pulled it out you put it back through so um, our household so this is a Rhapsody we go around with our hoodies all of the strings are like this are knotted together so that he can't pull them out but yeah he has a trick with a wire hanger that I don't know, it works well he does it super fast all right Kathleen I've tried ready to wear 2x but both are too small I never thought extra large would ever be too small all right um Kathleen I cannot expand your comment to read it all right, um, I'm gonna come back to that, Kathleen. Um, sewing sizes are very different than store-bought sizes. Um, you definitely wanna go by your measurements and go by your high bust measurement, which is there, full bust measurement for hips. Full hip is the fullest part of your seat and your hip, and then your waist all right, so my jeans are down here. This is not my waist down here. Huh? Yeah, that's not a waist down here. My waist is up here. So my waist is up here, my jeans are down here. When you're doing your waist measurement, it's actually way up there. But I'll come back to you, Kathleen, after we're done. Hi, Val. Oh my goodness. All right, so. All right, I don't know how I got onto, oh. All right. So we're gonna sew cuffs. I have one cuff sewn on. We're going to do that. We're going to do the basic hem, which is, these are the shorts that you see in the tutorial. I have one side to hem, I'm gonna do that with you. 
We are going to, these are my pink tensile joggers. We're going to do the elastic hem of the jogger. And this is the ankle length skirt. We're going to hem the ankle length skirt that has the lovely vent up the side. So that's what all we're tackling today. I was trying on these joggers today to check my pocket placement. Warning, you're going to get a picture of my bottom in the group because I need opinions on if my pockets are in a good place. And so that's coming later tonight. Woohoo! And I finally found words to describe this fabric. So if you have a pair of jeans that you've had for years, so long, and they're super thin and almost threadbare and because you know denim gets it's not supposed to be that thin and they are so soft and brushed and just amazing to wear tinsel that's it it's not threadbare obviously but um, like if you get denim that is been worn and washed a bazillion times and it's just really thin but this it's a good weight there's some there's some weight to this but broken in your favorite pair of lightweight denim jeans that is that's tinsel so all right let's start with the most basic hem all right and this is the same no matter if you're doing the shorts with the standard hem the crop pants or the knee length skirt so they're all the same. Oh, you are welcome, Linda. I have so much fun with it. All right, so I like to turn mine inside out and then just fold it up. The hem allowance is an inch. Make sure it's all nice and even. And then press. I don't go through with a hem gauge and make it incredibly super accurate. I just eyeball it. So, um, there are times where a hem gauge is warranted. I, hands down, it is a very important tool. And there are times that it is very important to measure your hem and make sure that it is very precise all the way around. This isn't one of them for me. I am a firm believer in rules. I like rules. I am a rule follower, except for when I'm a rule breaker. <laughs> So, um, you have to know your rules to break them, and I 100% believe in that in sewing. I do not believe in breaking rules any other time. So, I don't, I don't break out a hem gauge. I just fold it up wherever the hem wants to go, and that's where it goes. I do try to make it even. Um, I'm not totally reckless here. If your hem is not laying nicely, or if it's a super low loose woven hem tape is amazing something else you can do and this is where pins in my opinion have an advantage over clips especially if you get the pins with the glass heads which this is not but before you iron just go along and pin I should not have used a black one there pin perpendicular to the folded edge, always pin perpendicular to the folded edge, and then you can iron right over those needles. If you're using um, plastic uh, bald needles, you cannot iron over the plastic. It will melt. I've done it. Um, Cindy, yes, you can rewatch the other sew alongs. They are, if you go to the events, and click past events it's um they're all categorized in there kind of like calendar style if you go into the videos link on the side of the main group they're there i am working on getting them added to the youtube channel i've been terrible about doing that and i definitely need to do that to make them more accessible you can also find blog posts through um on the website just put sew along into the search bar and they'll come up so I've pressed that all the way around I like to top stitch 
with my right side on top. If you're not comfortable with that, you can definitely pop stitch it with the wrong side up. It, your stitches are supposed to look the same on both sides, no matter what. Just be mindful of what color bobbin thread you have in there, just if you uh, do so with the wrong side facing up. And again, I like to lengthen my stitch length for top stitching, and I'm just using a straight stitch. And I don't have a free arm on my machine, so I have to sew it inside out. And I just go through. I, can you, no, you can't see because my cat's butt's in the way. <laughs> I put a finger right in front of the foot. And what I'm doing is I'm feeling for that edge, the cut edge of the hem. And I'm just ensuring that I catch it all the time. <laughs> Hi. This is fish. Fish is needy. Go, 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 go. And I don't watch the needle. If you are new to sewing, or even if you've been sewing a long time and just getting a straight top stitch is not something that you've mastered yet. I have found that a lot of people watch the needle while they sew. Don't watch the needle. That needle knows what it's doing. It's doing its job. It's going to go up and down, up and down, up and down as long as you press the um, pedal. Don't watch the needle. Watch the edge of your fabric and use the guide that's built into your um, throat plate on your machine and watch that watch kind of ahead of it because you know when you're driving a car you don't watch your bumper you watch you watch what's coming so that you have time to correct watch a little watch several inches ahead of that so if we're putting our fabric on there and we've got it lined up with a mark on the guide. If your fabric is straight and you're watching closer to you a couple inches before, it's going to be straight. If you need to, you can take some tape, some washi tape or um, painter's tape and extend those guidelines down on your machine. Just, I have tape right there um, holding my machine together, but <laughs> you can put a piece of, piece of tape there and use that as a guide for a straight stitch and like I said, don't watch that needle. Watch where your fabric is lined up and that will get you a straight stitch every time. Boom. This pair is done. So there's our hem. I do serge the raw edge first and flip it up and sew. Okay, you keep having te technical difficulties, okay. I'm sorry, Marianne. I really am. Um, a lot of it, it's just, it's Facebook and it's out of my control and your control. Um, sometimes it's bandwidth. Again, that's pretty much out of control while you're trying to log on. I'm so sorry. Um, some people have better luck not clicking on the video and just letting it sit in your feed. So, um, stitch length. Mine is at a 3.8. Um, standard construction stitch length should be about a 2.2, 2.4. I do go pretty long and generous. I will go anywhere from a 3.4 to a 4 if I'm top stitching on knits. Um, it's very dependent on my fabric and my project and what I'm doing. They are super comfy. I have tried them on. They are amazingly comfortable. I, I'm really happy with them. All right, now let's do our cuff. I'm gonna check real quick. Da, 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 da. Okay, what brand of hem tape do you use? Um, I'm out. I have, I've used Stitch Witchery. Um, this is good. Yeah, because it's flipped, right? Heat and Bond Soft Stretch Light. I keep my packages so that I know what I've used. Um, but yeah, Stitch. Um, 
it just stitch witchery is one that I use a lot and then that heat and bond is a good brand too okay ba -ba -da -ba -da. I'm just flipping through Kathleen a serger is a game changer I have a brother what is it 1034 D you know that cheap I shouldn't say cheap inexpensive inexpensive very introduction grade serger you guys, that puppy's 10 years old and gets used almost daily. So, the only thing I've ever done is replace blades on it. Cleaned it out. Ba -ba -da -da -da. All right, okay, so our cuff. Our cuff has two pieces. Um, if your instructions don't look like they match what I showed on the blog and what I'm talking about today, re-download your pattern. Um, to get the updated instructions we we caught a minor blip in that very recently i apologize so um our cuff is two pieces the instructions show the cuff being made with one piece so it's it's minor but um so we have a front cuff and a back cuff you can see that one is a little bit bigger than the other your front cuff is smaller and we have this little angle at the end that angle gives us some shaping so that the cuff follows the same taper as the pants do so if you looked on the blog this morning there was a picture of the cuff undone and you can see how it has that definite flare out so that's because it's intended to be flipped up and match the taper of the leg for a nice professional result. Tammy's great with those little details. So we're going to line up the short ends of the cuff and just do a straight stitch and follow that angle. I even go so far as to pivot there. We're going to do that with both sides. I had my fabric shift a little bit when I cut this one. So it's not going to look like it lines up perfectly, but I'm going to kind of blend them together. Eh, that will do. And now I'm going to cut. I cut right into that seam allowance right there. You see that? Right at that corner. And that lets the fabric release so that the cuff can. I got to do the other end. Well, here. I'll show you if I can get it to work. All right, so you can see this is not cut. And this is the side that it wasn't, my fabric shifted. So pull it open and see it's pulling and you kind of push it to one side and you can see how it's all like bunching up right there. Clipping that open will allow us it allows the fabric to wiggle and then when we fold it I'm actually going to open this seam up it allows the fabric to overlap because you can see right there even how it's doing it I'm gonna press it really quickly but it allows that fabric to really lay how we want it to and not bunch up and everything thanks Terry um, this Rhapsody is another Kelly broke the rules. Um, we get a lot of questions um, with the woven um, 
woven patterns, can I use quilter's cotton? And I don't blame you. It's cute, it's affordable, it's easily available, and if you want quilted, you have gobs of it. So I like to not follow the fabric recommendations and use some quilter's cotton to show you what happens if you break that rule. And honestly, nine times out of ten, I'm perfectly happy with it. But a lot of that has to do with my shape. So quilter's cotton, you can see it, it doesn't have drape. There is none there, it's kind of stiff, it's a good body, it takes a pressing beautifully. I am boxy, so the boxy silhouette that's created by the lack of drape doesn't affect me, because that's what I look like anyways. <laughs> so I actually, I really love Rhapsody and I have a cadence in a quilter's cotton and I love them. Like I said, they don't drape. They're not going to um, hang as intended in the design. It is going to create a boxy shirt. I like boxy shirts. I like men's cut t-shirts for that same reason. <laughs> because um, for women's shirts, I have to size up incredibly because my waist is like two sizes bigger than everything else. So like my sh the shoulders won't fit and I like, so I need that boxy look. So I sew stuff in quilter's cotton to see how it turns out. So I can say, hey, you can use that, but this is what's going to happen. And so like my daughter, she, I don't know, I gave birth to her. Um, she's my genetics. I don't know where her body shape came from. Nobody in my family is shaped like this kid. She, um, not, not my mini me, that steals my clothes all the time that that one looks just like this except for blonde hair with curls um, my younger daughter is a very slender hourglass like almost a pear-shaped hour she's very pear-shaped actually I don't know where that came from there is nobody in my husband's family nobody in my family that is a petite pear her She's 15 and she has 10 inches of difference between her hip and her waist. And then she's like super petite up top with really broad shoulders. I don't, I don't know where it came from. So she does not like boxy clothes because of her broad shoulders. She doesn't like the silhouette that it creates because it's not her silhouette. So just know your fabric and you can use what works for you and break rules like that da, 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 da. okay so I'm pinning the side seams to all right I didn't pay attention I did this when I did the mock-up too okay remember we have the um, front is smaller than the back mark your front <laughs> learn from me all right I just marked the front all right, let's try this again. Take two. So you definitely need to make sure that your front and backs are lined up because it's not going to fit right. You know, because they're, the front is not as wide at the hem because your shape, your leg shape is primarily in the back of your leg. What in the world? My clip didn't... Okay. Come on. There we go. Boom. So you're... It's really not difficult, you know, unless you're doing it live and your fingers aren't wanting to work. So you just clip the cuff right sides together, match the front and back, match your side seams. Boom. And then so She is unique she is unique and she is awesome she is a challenge for me though because I have gotten very good at sewing for my rectangle shape my petite like petite as in short not petite as in small framed because I am not that I've gotten very good at sewing for that shape and my older daughter um, benefits from that because I can very easily adjust for her but Kate 
I had to learn how to add length to the arm side. Um, I don't have to do that for me. <laughs> and I have to learn small bust adjustments for Kate, where for me, I need a full bust adjustment. So she has definitely allowed me to learn some skills that I would not have learned otherwise. is nice and flat. Oh, I just caught a pepper. Oh, well. My fabric puckered. I'm not concerned. Let's see if I can show you what it did. Right. Oh, and it's in black too. Oh, it's so little. Right there, it puckered. I don't care. If I did care, and I, look, you can see it on this side better. You see it right there? If I did want to fix that, I would just, uns I would just rip out this section right here, lay it flat, restitch it, and be done with it. But it's super tiny, and the cup is going to hide it. So it's sewn on, the raw edge is done. Could you do this seam on the serger? Um, could you? Technically, yeah. But I don't recommend that you sew that seam on the serger. Um, you're not routinely going to find me recommending sewing a seam on the serger um, because it creates a weaker seam. And especially with the loose weave fabric, it, um, it can pull apart and then you'll have a hole in that seam. Um, board shorts fabric is for the most part pretty stable so I technically could have gotten away with it but you're going to have a more secure seam if you sew it first and then use the serger. The one exception to that is if you have a five thread serger which I don't. Um, the five thread serger is um, like sewing and serging at the same time. So I'm just pressing the seam allowance up. So yeah, um, knits, uh, I do construct on the serger. Um, hands down, you can do that the way that knit fabrics are made versus woven fabrics. Um, you can definitely construct with the serger for knits, but I I don't recommend it for wovens. You want that seam allowance there for strength and your serger is going to remove it. So now we're just top stitching that um, seam allowance up. Lengthen the stitch. sew mine inside out and work my way around. Alright, let's find a place where you can see this. Alright, they're upside down. Let's flip them around. There's the seam allowance top stitched in place. There we go. Okay, if it's, yes, yep, I, depending on what I'm doing, Chris, I do take that stance on stuff. Um, 
there are times that I am very, very particular and very perfectionist on, um, on things. I do have some garments that I've sewn that I consider heirloom quality. I do, um, I sew my daughter's formal wear dresses. Those are, those are very detail oriented. I pay a ton of attention to, even though the odds of her ever wearing it again are very slim. Um, those do get, I pay attention to detail on those, but on some board shorts where the cuff is hiding the pucker, nobody's going to know. All right. Those are done. Yay. I cannot wait to go kayaking in these. I like that longer length. Um, if you've ever been kayaking and you are very fair and pale complected like this, you know that what burns first is the top of your legs. <laughs> so I'm very excited to have some longer shorts for kayaking. All right. Next up is the jogger cuff. Boom. All right. Ugh, watch those pins. I tried these on and I am so in love. So in love. So in love. These are my new favorite pants. All right. I have already pressed the hem up and sewn it. There's my gap. And you got to leave a hole for the elastic. Oh man, what did I do with that? Oh, sorry, my life is on the floor. <laughs> okay. Um, no, I did not stitch the sides of my cuff so that they stay in place because this is really structured fabric and I didn't even think about talking to you about that. So thank you. This is structured. It stays. It stays up beautifully. Ow. <laughs> if, if it did not stay, what I would do is I would do a straight stitch right. It's called stitch in a ditch if you quilt. I don't quilt. I pretend to quilt. I just pretend enough to know some terms like nesting seams and stitch in the ditch. So when you stitch in a ditch, it's a straight stitch directly into the seam and it doesn't show very much. So um, that's how I would do it. And if it's loose enough where this is, this front is flopping down too, you could hand stitch a few tacks in there. It is something that I would probably do it and that would be an attention to detail that I would probably do because that would make me a little crazy you could interface the cuff lightly I would do the lining the one that's up against the body of the shorts you could interface that with a lightweight interface seam to help give that some stability if you really wanted it to stay in place um, if you wanted uh, I think it would create a little bit more of a casual look which is great and fun you could even top stitch right along the cuff and if I did that I would probably top stitch top and bottom just for uniformity to keep that cuff in place so oh I'm sorry oh I don't know why Facebook is being difficult right now okay yes stitch in a ditch for facings too it works okay all right, any other questions on those? I promise this is not as painful to watch. Last night, if you joined us, I, I don't know how long it took me to thread that elastic through that waistband. So, this is a lot quicker for me. You have two options on your hem. So you can either search the raw edge or zigzag stitch or overlock stitch um, or if your fabric doesn't fray just leave it and fold the whole thing up an inch and a half I think is what it was check your pattern or you can turn that raw edge to the wrong side a quarter of an inch press and then fold the whole thing up in um, one and a quarter inches 
and press again so that the raw edge is encased into the cuff. So I just surged it. My trusty bobkin that um, apparently is not the best tool <laughs> for elastic threading. Grab the end and then just insert and thread it in. I have to sneeze. I said that and now I can't get it started. Okay, there we go. Somebody had asked yesterday in the comments if I had any concern about um, having this slide in. I don't typically because I do leave a nice long tail. If I'm concerned that it's going, that I'm going to lose it, like if it's a really gathered um, waistband, what I'll do is I will take a safety pin and I will safety pin this to the outside so that it can't pull through. Almost there. There we go. And then just overlap the edges. I need to get a little bit more of that out. There. Now I'm just going to overlap the edges. I overlapped like an inch-ish, that's a new word, about an inch, half inch, three quarters of an inch. It's really not precise. Right there, just zigzag stitch. Why did you not do it from the side seam on this one? Um, because, I mean, you can, but um, the way the cuff is done for the pants, you just, the side seam's already constructed, you just press it up and then top stitch in place, and it's really easy to just leave a gap at the top when you hem that cuff in place, you just leave a small gap there versus enclosing that whole, you know, hemming around the whole cuff and then getting the seam ripper out and ripping the seam open, you just leave a small gap. So um, that's why I don't do it that way versus the waistband where I did sew those side seams all the, all the way because the waistband is not top stitched down. Like if the waistband had been a fold over and top stitched to create a casing, I would have just left a gap but it's different construction. And honestly, on waistbands where you fold it over and create a casing and then insert the elastic, I don't do it that way. And if you were with me last night, you know why I don't do it that way. I I do it like the leggings pattern. I attach the elastic to the raw edge and then I flip it over and top stitch it down. All right, so now we're just gonna straight stitch that hole closed oh. remember to turn off your zigzag go back to a straight stitch And now we are going to top stitch the elastic in place. So you see that line of stitching that's right in the middle of the casing? Okay, those are, they do match my top. And actually I'm wearing this top in the picture that I had my husband take to um, show pocket placement. But as well as the colors match I, I I can't I it looks lovely it looks very pretty and they match very well but I am NOT a big pink wearer if you have been following me a while you know that I tend to do 
teal peacock gray is my favorite <laughs> i am a very neutrals neutrals that blend into the crowd um i don't use black a lot because um it makes me more pale but gray is my best friend and if i went out in pink pants and a floral shirt with pink i would be so uncomfortable because it's so bold in my head and I am not bold <laughs> in my fabrics. I am all solids and grays. I mean, look at my wall of fabrics. It's all solids <laughs> and blues and grays. <laughs> I, I need to embrace my pink. I'm trying. I, I picked pink joggers and I love them, but I am so wearing these with a gray t-shirt. I actually... ordered some gray. I don't know where it went. I did. I ordered some gray bamboo jersey from Style Maker and I love it. I love it. And I am making a classic tee to wear with these in a gray. <laughs> Because like I said, this match is lovely and I would love it on somebody else, but man, I, I'm not, I want to blend in. <laughs> I'm, I'm scared. <laughs> Why not simply stitch in the side seams to make sure. You can do that. You can, um, you can just, uh, you know, do a stitch in the ditch right there. What this does, it just creates a look. It's a detail. So if you don't like, it kind of gives in a little bit of an athletic look. If you don't care for that, or um, it's tricky for you to pull the elastic straight, because you do have to pull it straight as you're sewing. You can't leave it bunched up like that. You have to pull. Um, you can do that. It's whatever look you're after. So, boom, I do love them. The gray. Yay, Linda, team gray. What pattern is my blouse? It's a Rhapsody with, yeah, I did the fluttered sleeves even. So you can really see, see how they stand out. That's not what a fluttered sleeve is supposed to do. But if you have some thick upper arms, I do. I have very thick upper arms. It gives you extra breathing room. All right, something else I wanted to show you guys, I had, <laughs> is I had talked yesterday about a faux tie. So I did that on these. I just stitched, I, there's no buttonholes here. I just straight stitched on either side about an inch apart on this. This is actually elastic and just attached it to the front. No buttonholes, no threading elastic through. And then when you tie it, You cannot tell that it's not a real, like you would, you would have no, you'd never know. So if you don't like buttonholes, but you like the look and you're not going to need that drawstring, there you go. All right. Okay. I think I got them all. I do have to attach the pockets to that still, but. I want your opinions on it. All right, so now our split hem. Hello. Where's the loaf pan? Where's what? The loaf pan. The loaf pan. Oh, um, you know the coffee cabinet? Yeah. Like third shelf up. It's up and it's towards the back. It's probably in the pie pans. Sorry. Um, okay, split hem. Isn't that nice? That's what it looks like from the inside. There we go. So we are going to create that. I did one just to save on time. So we have already, remember when we did the side seam construction, we pressed that vent in. Okay, I'm curious, do you sit on the exercise ball? Um, no, <laughs> because that's a lot of core strength and Kelly doesn't have it. I tried for like 30 seconds. I 
bought that for stretches, not I have some lumbar issues probably from standing and so it's not from standing and sewing it's my kid broke my back he didn't really break it my kid was a brutal labor and I have some pain from it still so I bought that to do stretches and stuff I cannot sit and sew on it I can barely sit and type at my computer on that thing all right is there a reason you don't use the elastic the his because it's expensive and I'm cheap <laughs> Yes, there is. Here, I think I have some. Oh. Okay, I do. So, yes, you can use this. All right, hey, let's do another little trick. See how, what's holding my elastic together? It's a scrap piece of elastic that I sewed into a tube. All right, so you can buy elastic with a drawstring. Um, I bought this at Joann's. If this is, are you referring to where I bought this, Chris? This is from Joann's, and I think it's, you can get it on Amazon. Wawak might have it. Um, so it's stretchy. It is, it's, it's more expensive, and um, you have to, like, this has to be in the front. So, like, how I do it is, how did I do it? It's been a while since I used it. I like butted it up, I think. I don't remember how I did it. But yeah, they do sell elastic with the drawstring. And you can use it. It is 100% an option. So, okay. Da, 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 da. You are welcome, Chris. Okay. All right. The yoga ball. Da, 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 da. Okay. The hem. So we pressed that hem over when we did our side seam. And then you want to, I like to go ahead and press the bottom up and just create that nice clean press. So just pressing everything to the wrong side. Can we see this? Let's turn. Because this is too big to hold up. So everything is pressed to the wrong side. And now we're going to actually flip it over to the front, to the right side, open up your hem vent. So we have these nice creases from pressing. We're working on the right side, the right side. You're gonna fold your hem up to the right side, right along that crease. So it's about one inch. This is just like when we did the pocket. And then we're going to stitch this in place. So right there, can you see that? Oh, it showed up really well in the blog post and of course it's not showing up well here. So I stitched pretty much in line with that crease from the hem vent, folded it up to the right side and pressed it or stitched it and now I'm gonna flip that hem to the wrong side and tuck that all in there we go again a chopstick is great for that and then you have look how nice and clean that edge is. it's so so nice and okay I already did it there I already did it there okay I'm just checking to make sure and then I press it again because, you know, I press everything. Only while I'm sewing, not after, not after it's been washed. Actually, huh, this, I, I never press it. I wash it, I dry it in the dryer, and I hang it up. You know, isn't that smart? Like, Tammy came up with that, man. I had... I had not seen it done. And then you just stitch it in place, just like a traditional hem. You're going to work your way all the way around. So I did it in stages so that I could have, you know, I, I love it, but I don't need two ankle length skirts in my closet right now. So I did do part of this for the blog post and I left one side for us 
for this demonstration, so I just need to figure out where I'm at. All right, that is all stitched. Okay, so just start wherever you want. Pin it, pin your hem up in place, clip it in place. Um, hem tape works really well. And you're gonna work your way all the way around the skirt, top stitching that hem in place. So I'm going up the vent right now. So if you remember when we constructed the side seam, we sewed past that vent uh, about an inch. Sorry, I can feel that it's not laying flat. So we kind of went up, you know, we stitched past that vent. So that will give you some room on top stitching. So I go up about a half an inch beyond that vent. And then pivot, sew across the top of the vent, go down an inch, and then I pivot and go down the other side. And then pivot at the bottom. And you know when you pivot, drop the needle, open the, lift up the presser foot. this thread blends pretty easily but there can you see that stitching line the stitch line is right there bottom of the vent is there so I went up past that vent across and then pivoted back down <laughs> you can never sew a straight going that fast it's linen so it presses beautifully stays in place well and then um, if you hold it a little bit taut it will stay nice and straight and honestly that thread blends really well so and nobody's gonna look at your ankles like if somebody's looking at your ankles to see if your hem is straight don't even worry about it so that's what it looks like on the inside even though i used white bobbin thread so i went up there you can see it over and then back down and you just go all the way around the skirt like that the ah, corners are enclosed and boom we have a skirt I did not top stitch the elastic on this yet so I need to do that if I'm going to do that I haven't decided yet I need to actually I might take the elastic in on this one a little. So, but there's the pockets. It does, but again, it's pink on pink and I can't, I can't, I, this, I will wear probably a white shirt with, or a denim, denim's a neutral. Yes, Kate. Okay, I'll find it in a minute for you. She's, okay, congratulations. All right, so what kind of clippers are those? Uh, for Fiskers. They're really nice because then you're not like fumbling with the, you know, the little holes for your, <laughs> that's the word. So, um, they have a lock I, to make them safe in your drawer. But yeah. I like them. They are, like I said, I, I like little sewing notions. I like the boost of confidence here, but again, I'm a wallflower. <laughs> Wearing this without a cardigan over it is bold for me. Okay, sewing seam. I, I don't know. I'm really comfortable sewing standing up. Um, I move from machine to machine to pressing so much that it just, 
and I'm short, so I mean it helps that my table is right here. Like I'm not, I don't have to bend over far. <laughs> so, all right, any questions for me at all about the Allegro? <laughs> Okay, boom, boom, boom. All right, so I am going to have a, um, some hacks on the blog. Hopefully tomorrow was my plan. I gotta get working on that. I'm going to sew some joggers with, they are, I'm working on them. Okay, this is I don't know where this is from. I, it was just in my stash. It's a baby rayon French terry. Super soft. I'm making some joggers. I've cropped them. Um, I think when I measured, I want to say my the out seam. I did 32 inches. I don't. That was from the waist down. And so I'm going to do a cuff, a knit cuff and a yoga waistband on these. I am very excited about these. And so that's one thing. And then, this is really in pieces. This I need to work on. So this is that yellow stretch woven that I was just a little bit concerned about um, the light color makes it a little bit I can see you can't really tell on the camera but like um it's a little bit I'm just I'm afraid that I would have to be paying really close attention to what color my underwear are and I am not that detail oriented so I am doing a skort with these and so I am going to sew up I'm doing shorts with no pockets and I'm going to sew those and then I'm going to sew the skirt with pockets. That's the back. Yeah, I, I, did I do pockets? No, I did no, no pockets. I don't know what I did. Oh, that's the, there's the front. Okay, yes, pockets. And I'm going to slide the shorts into the skirt and then attach the waistband. <laughs> They're mauve. It's mauve. It's dusty mauve. <laughs> this is me branching out into pink. This is comfort. The other ones are not comfortable. It's, it's mauve. Mauve is not pink. <laughs> so, um, that's my plan with these. Um, the, um, here is, this is that same material, that stretch woven from Fabric Fairy. And this, there is no sheerness at all. Ooh, that got my white. <laughs> um, this is not sheer at all. I think it's, it, I know it's just the color because I have it in Peacock too. Because, um, once I discovered this stuff, I went back and ordered Lots. So this is the peacock and look, I'm like pulling that tight and it's not sheer at all. So Mama's in the pink family. <laughs> okay, that's just what I was looking for. And a cry, yeah. So um, where are your back pockets on your joggers? I don't know if I'm going to put back pockets on them because I'm going to definitely do the front pockets. I haven't decided if I'm going to put back pockets on them. Um, confession time, I hate sewing patch pockets. I hate it so much. I don't know why it's, I just, I don't like sewing them. <laughs> I don't like sewing them on shirts. I don't like sewing them on pants. Um, I just don't like <laughs> doing it. Tammy's trick of, um, folding the top to the right side, that makes it better <laughs> for me, but I don't know. Some people don't like hemming. Some people don't like neck bands. Mine is patch pockets. I avoid them. Okay. Um, is there a yoga waistband on in another patterns instructions? Um, yes. Um, Sybil 
has a yoga waistband. I'm trying to think if there's any others. I think that's the only one, but it's really easy to math it out. I just um, measured my waist where I'm going to wear them and cut 80% the length and for about a four inch tall finished yoga waistband it's nine and a half inches tall so it's just a rectangle piece um, and then I did go over the math and all of that on the blog post from whenever that was Wednesday I think okay um, clippers yay Danita's on my team okay I can get one right <laughs> yeah I don't do a lot of eye makeup either um <laughs> Yay, I'm so glad you guys are with me. I Yes, Tess is right. Ravina does have the um, yoga waistband. I've only done the cont contoured duet. I think duet has it too. Look, <laughs> mauve is related to pink. Aw, oh, thanks, Kathleen. <laughs> I'm, I'm real. <laughs> um, so, um, bu -bu 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 -bu. yeah, the yoga waistband, um, with that skirt also, um, something that I had thought about doing and I just, because of the sheerness of this fabric, I went in a different direction and you can make a skirt with board short fabric or swim fabric. Swim might be heavy when it gets wet, but you can make a skirt and board short fabric and then take an underwear pattern that has this a similar rise so you would want a a mid mid rise underwear pattern don't bikini rise is not going to work and super high waist is not going to work take a mid mid rise underwear pattern and you can sew the underwear sew the skirt and then slip the underwear into the skirt with the right side of the underwear against the wrong side of the skirt and then attach your waistband and then you have a swim skirt I did not size down for the undershorts because um, that would make them really tight in the thigh. You could do them in a knit, and if you did the undershorts in a knit, then I would recommend sizing down one size. Um, okay, mauve is related to pink. You guys are just going to drill that home. <laughs> Oh, um, double layer yellow. Yeah, the yellow doubled up is, it's great. It's just, it's the light color. I love the weight of the fabric and I have, I have no fear of this being hot and stuffy in the summer. We have very humid, hot summers here in the Midwest. So yeah, it's a really good weight. I, I wish I could open this comment up. We used to have a mom come into school with I'm gonna read that when I get done with this so um oh I remember where I was gonna go earlier yes that's what I was gonna say Terry that double face tape is great so it makes it more bearable part of my issue is is that I attention to detail patch pocket being perfectly straight and squared like 90 degree corners is a big thing for me I I want that I strive for that and so if I take the double hem tape and while constructing the pocket when you fold it over to the wrong side you know your sides and you put that tape there it gives it stability and makes those corners more crisp and then straight sides as you attach it it, it is it is a lifesaver thank you Terry okay I love pattern hacks we love it um patterns can't I mean they can be a few dollars and we want to help you stretch your budget as far as you can and if we can take something and create a casual skirt an athletic skirt and a swim skirt all in one it's awesome and it just it's so fun to think outside of the box and create things beyond what the original drafting design was for. So, and then being able to share that with you guys makes it even more fun. So, um, I love, love, love pattern hacks. So, um, there have been a couple of times that I've thought of something to do and it was like, oh, 
no that's just that's that's a whole nother pattern we I can't <laughs> I can't do that so um but yeah they're fun pattern hacks are fun so anything else all right this has been awesome so I'm going to get those sewn up um that blog post is not going to be live at seven it's going to be um it'll be a little bit later in the day but I will share in the group when I um when I have that up and done for you I'm trying to think if there's anything else oh I need to create the post prizes we love prizes so um we're going to have a drawing so any allegro that you have made this week with me is an entry and if you've made five you have five entries so I will create a post and in that post I'm going to ask you to share a picture of your finished allegro and for every every allegro that you've done is one entry so create a separate post or a separate comment for them and you have through the weekend to sew and then Monday I'll draw one winner that winner will receive a $50 gift certificate to Love Notions yay and a $30 gift certificate to um, the Fabric Fairy and Style Maker Fabrics so quick math $110 worth of gift certificates so that that's a lot of fabric and patterns so um you have through the weekend to to sew and the deadline to have your um, allegro posted in that post is midnight or 11 59 sunday night so you have all day saturday all day sunday so um i will create the post it's going to be in the event group i will link to it in the main group because i know that sometimes um it can be hard um prizes open internationally um yes because they're gift certificates um they are open internationally so i i don't know if those shops um ship internationally i did not look into that i didn't even think about that i'm so sorry um it should state on their website i will look to double check that they ship internationally um, most places do know though nowadays but they the they are in the form of gift certificates so um, yep so I will get that post up tonight it'll be later tonight because when I'm done here I'm eating tacos with my husband <laughs> so all right anything else oh what was that one Okay, saves a ton of fitting time and I have a lot of garments made off of. Oh, with, in regards to pattern hacking is where I'm assuming that was. Yes, okay. All right, I think we are wrapping up. Thank you very much for joining me. I have had so much fun. Uh, I'll get those posts up later this evening for the entries. And I look forward to seeing your Allegra's. If you want to share a picture of you wearing them, beautiful. Love it. If you want to share a picture, just a flat lay, you lay it on the table, take a picture, whatever you're comfortable with. So thank you, everybody. It's been fun. I will talk to you later. Bye.